I just got a request from a client the other day to look at creating a bit of a texture in a set of words. I mean, I put just use this now as an example, blue flame here, but to have a texture inside of it. And often it can be done with um, taking a image and putting it in there. <coughs> Sorry, the... Uh, ways of also doing it with a bit of noise. Um, for those of you that might not be aware, there's a nice tool which seems to be hidden. If you are going to be doing vector work that's going to be stretched like massive boards and so forth and you don't have high res uh, images that you can use as textures, you could probably have a workaround with adding a bit of noise. So for example, if I had to choose just this color here, it's, it's very sort of plane if I wanted to add a bit of noise in. Um, you see I've been fiddling with it here already but basically your opacity slider you take that and if you click on the opacity slider it changes to noise and as you drag it across you have a bit of noise that you can create on the image and then I mean you could add some you know additional effects uh, whether it's a inner shadow you can maybe create a bit of depth from it you know that kind of look and feel with it so you add a bit of texture whatever it is or emboss whatever you want to go to but adding the noise adds quite a bit of nice feel to it and if you don't have the noise if I remove the noise now it just kind of goes nice and plain you might want that but uh, I think the the noise element adds a bit of no grunge into it which adds a bit of character to to the images but if you are allowed to put in a, a image if the end product is not going to be you know massive as such and it's going to maintain its size then pretty much you could use an image um, if you're ever going to use the design on a, a bigger format and the image quality is not going to be sufficient then you should rethink it right at the start but what I'm going to do now is um, I am going to put in an image into the background but besides putting an image in in the conventional way I'm going to show you the way I do it to maintain high quality um, and you basically will be able to take the best resolution of the image you're using along with the actual vector art that you're doing um, but I'll show you what most people would do. So if we had this image and I had to put in a, or we have this text, this vector text, and I have to put an image into it, most people would come and I'm going to just drop in, I think I have, uh, yeah, this is a gold texture. Just copy this and paste control V. Con okay, so this is the size of the texture. So what they would do is, um, choose it nicely across and for those of you who are familiar with uh, affinity designer you know that you can just drag it and create a sort of the the image to go inside of the text that we're working on for a crazy reason i can't remember the term um, that is used ah, my brain's gone dumb but anyhow we drag it underneath and if it forms a band that doesn't go all the way it basically goes underneath there and it fills up into the text area but now you see here that you have this kind of setup and if I zoom in here the quality of this texture is really bad now if I go 100% um, it's not too convincing okay I'm going to just switch that effect off so that we don't see that going um, so if I zoom in there, it's, it's real bad quality. Now, this image itself is, the texture is not that that small. Um, so what people do often is they'll go in and on the background pixel layer, they would go and kind of do this thing that would get me crazy, but they would size it down and go, ah, oh, now we've got the full resolution of that image in the text here but when you go and look at it it's like very uh, very bad it's poor pixelated squashed everything and 
uh, the person who, who used this stick or created this texture did a lot of work to get the high quality they did and if they wanted it squeezed they would have squeezed it so uh, i think we need to use it in in the context of what it's been designed for um, the proportions etc so this is my recommendation i'm going to just delete that i'll go and get this again so this is what i'm suggesting you you do um, I'm bringing it across there and then I'll do the same thing but now this is what I do is I, I check the the highest um, letter that I'm using or the highest object that I'm using so in this case the B and the F are about the highest and I'll use them as a starting point for my top corner and then I'd proportionately size it so I'm coming down to the size of the texture but totally proportionate to as as close as I can get it there okay and if we look at the texture now we're seeing lots better texture so we're maintaining the the actual texture and just sizing it according to the text over there okay so what happens now with this overlay don't get too anxious to start taking the size and squeezing it in because then you're going to forfeit the purpose again so it's simple as creating one texture and for me I don't mind how how big the texture is i want the quality to maintain so i'll go alt keep alt down drag out the copy and keep the shift button to constrain it so you have that constraining line across and then i'll go just to the edge of the next letter and i'll let go again alt drag out constrain and just to the edge of the next letter don't worry about the excess that goes to the side everything we do exactly the same and I'll go to the F just in front of the F same thing with the L so what I'm doing is I'm not overlaying two of these textures over the same uh, letter it's basically flowing to one direction if I go out there I'm going to take it there again oops what did I do there same thing so it's alt and create a duplicate and constraint button so there basically I'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of these textures all in areas over here. And for me, I'm happy. If the file size become a bit bigger, it's a it's a good price to pay for for keeping the quality going. So when you look at each of these letters, they're maintaining their quality very nicely. And that's what you want. So it's it's what the end user sees that is more important than what is going on under the wood. And this I've learned, I, I mean, I always say I do 3D work also with Cinema 4D, SketchUp and the likes. And I always say people don't ask what program you were using. They look at the end product and if it's satisfactory, how you got to it and your workflow is not in question. It's the end result. So yeah, again, we can go back and just go switch on that inner shadow. And look here, we've got lots nicer, cleaner quality of texture in the background with whichever effect you want to put in there and there we have a a really nice um, texture going forward and it is a pixel based texture that's in the background and now if we do a stretch we are basically doing a proportionate stretch of each of these individual textures in the background and they'll all maintain the the relative um, sort of consistency there we go i remembered the name clipping i think they call this uh, uh when you're clipping the image okay so yeah hopefully that's been of value creating textures inside of shapes and keeping the quality of the texture quite high remember it's important to have the initial texture as high as possible and then to individualize it according to each object okay and and the same thing goes if you if you're going to be maybe i should just close in saying if you're going to be using say different types of objects and they are going to be used in relation to each other now this object might be smaller than this one so you might be tempted to take the entire texture but if they use totally independently then you can add the texture independently but if you are going to use them in context with each other then it's it's good to keep the the texture similar to what you want so if i go here and i copy this control v 
let's go here where are we so I'll just take that down there and then move it across okay so here again if I'm going to be using both these objects I'll go to the biggest object I will size it according to the biggest object and once I have it at that size I'll create a copy across now I've got to insert it into this one here uh, where did my copy go to oh it's it's still in the clipping area I'm going to just move it out of it um, maybe take it to the top and then I'm going to move it into this area now important to note I'd be tempted to take this and to start resizing it to to get a kind of an optimal look over over here but if we start coming closer the the actual re the actual texture here is different there it's a more compressed texture whereas if we go and we keep it at the original when when you take it in it will look more that it's part of the similar texture if you are going to be using these two together in a way okay one nice other tool let me just do this it's my bad problem that I, I want to make things look at least a bit uh, nice in the way um, I know you might be asking what am I doing here but let me just go across the and I just want to create a little bit of shine so I did a tutorial on this a while back go transparency and do it the other way around there we go just click off that and make sure that there's no black circle around it and here we can go with a, a bit of shine on the top of that one okay that's not too perfect but uh, get the idea to create a bit of glossiness on that area okay so that's it for for textures um, that you are dropping in hopefully it's been able to help you and to give you much higher quality images um, rule of thumb is if you're going to be using it on massive structures rather try and create vector noises and so forth or vector textures that are in there but if you want to use an image um, this is a good way to use it to maintain the the quality of the actual texture when you using it alongside vector art great stuff so have a fantastic day and share what you've learned here with others uh, you will save them a lot of time spending researching for themselves and the more time they save the more time they have to spend with themselves and their family so you'll be doing a good deed so have a fantastic day and god bless